Bianca, welcome to Coast to Conversations. Hi, how are you? I'm not too bad, thank you. Very different format for me, this, a face-to-face -face interview, but given the choice between a Zoom interview and a face-to-face, -face, you chose face-to-face. -face. I did. I, I think that's very indicative of how you approach things here at Alton Towers. It's very hands-on, it's very personable. Uh, has that always been like a, a method of yours since... Uh, starting with the attractions management? Absolutely, because yeah. I mean, I love connection, you know, I love experiences and I think I, I just prefer to have a conversation face to face. So yeah. yeah, off the screen. We spend so much time on the screen, don't yeah. we? So let's be off the screen. Exactly. I, I mean, I think I've woken up at like seven o'clock in the morning and I've had <laughs> messages from you at five o'clock in the morning, <laughs> all the way up until midnight. Like, do you ever get some time to just relax and just enjoy yourself? And what I, do you do in your spare time? I do, yeah, I yeah. definitely do. Um, so, but yeah, I am up early. I do stay up late different times. So yeah, I'm, I'm always, I'm always on. Yeah. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so from attractions management in Australia to working in Yaz Island and Abu Dhabi and yeah. now the role that you're in today, what was that progression like for you up the ladder of that career management? Was management always the end goal or was it just a natural progression? No, I mean, I started when I was 18. So I've been doing this for almost 30 years now. Like yeah. it's been a long time and it's the only thing that I've ever wanted to do. So from when I first got that job as a, as a ride operator, I started on the rides. I knew on that day in the induction that I wanted to lead a theme park. Um, and I've never wanted to do anything else. So I've spent my whole entire career in parks, um, in water parks, in FECs, like with IPs, like it's just been an incredible, incredible 30 years. Um, and I'm richer for the experience and I've learned along the way and you know, from Australia to the Middle East, you know, and now in the UK. So I just, I just love what I do. Brilliant. Now, and for those who are maybe at the ground floor of the theme park industry or those looking to kind of get started in the industry, what kind of one piece of advice would you give them to kind of give them the head start to, to push forward with that career? Yeah, I think you just kind of need to go for it, don't you? I mean, there's so many different industries and I think people find their feet. I, it, for me, it just connected like this place where people go to have fun, where they create memories, where you're in groups of people, like in teams of people from where you're working and then obviously from what you're delivering. Like it's a happy place, you know, I can, I can leave my office and I go out into the park and, and that's what I'm seeing day to day. And I just, I love that environment. I love experiences. I would prefer that I would go on an experience than I would if someone was to give me a gift yeah um, and whether that's theme parks museums immersive digital like whatever it is um, I just I just love to do that travel as well so it all kind of plays its part and comes together in this perfect environment yeah. for me I suppose fun is kind of like the heart of the story yeah. when it comes to theme park because if you're working whether you're covering it as a content creator whether you're working in the theme park I think I guess fun has to be the heart of everything that's uh, kind of embodies what a theme park is about absolutely absolutely yeah. um, I mean I love being in that environment so it feels very natural to me and I can be in that environment and can be completely immersed and switch off my kind of like work thinking but it's, yeah. it's more about how do I feel how does this experience make me feel what do I see in terms of my sight lines and you know what am I being pulled into and then how did it how did it go after yeah. I've been through it so um, I'm always taking pictures of signs I'm always like wh wherever you know my phone is full of signs um, pictures of signs or pictures of things that made me feel something or that I think oh that's really great I love that I'm, I'm quite inspired by what's around me yeah. and then how does that relate to where I actually am or which park or you know what I'm actually doing Right, so I've never been to Australia. That's a then mission of mine. So <laughs> on the list? Yeah, it's on the list, okay, hopefully, good. even though I'm kind of scared of snakes. So uh, <laughs> it's okay. as soon as I see the size of the spiders and snakes over there, it kind of puts me off actually going to Australia. It's okay. So whether the confines of a theme park are snake free, <laughs> yeah. then we'll determine if I go or not. But yeah. I can only speak of my experience from Yaz Island in Abu Dhabi and yeah. the operations over there. And all of the parks, whether it's Ferrari World or Warner Brothers, are very regimented in how they operate. Um, how would you compare the landscape of how parks are run over there compared to the UK landscape? They're very different, like as you know from when you're there. So the portfolio that I led on Yaz Island was predominantly indoors. So, you know, that's the, your facilities management there is incredible in terms of like your air conditioning and your services yeah. and those types of things. So it doesn't compare really to the UK because we're predominantly outdoor, you <laughs> yeah. know. So the environments are very different. I spent eight years in Abu Dhabi um, and I'm richer for the experience in terms of like the cultural diversity, you know, working with nationalities. Yeah. I had 166 different Different nationalities in one park um, so wow. you know all coming together and talking English and you know delivering yeah. experiences and everybody has a different way of thinking about that 
Um, you know, the, again, the cultural part is very different because there, there are things that are, you know, are quite kind of like controlled, yeah. um, which was just an amazing experience to learn from. The IPs, incredible. I mean, I'm a Ferrari World Abu Dhabi is just in, an amazing brand. And I really got to get to understand like the story of Enzo Ferrari. I had incredible experiences with them. And, you know, my role was to deliver that experience to the masses where Ferrari is quite luxury and renowned yeah. and not everybody can afford it. You know, it's those types of things. I went to the Ferrari factory in Italy and got to walk the floor and meet the people on the ground and I've never seen anything like it, so it was quite inspiring. And I drove an 812 super fast around the streets of Maranello. Like, can you believe? Like, just incredible brand experiences yeah. that really kind of like helped me make decisions about the park and what it is that we're doing and how do you bring a brand to life. And I, I just learnt so much through that experience. Um, I think all my experiences through lots of different IPs. I've worked with Nickelodeon, Ferrari, Warner Brothers, Hanna Barbera in the early days. So back with the Flintstones, yeah, yeah. you know. So um, I've seen how slimes made, like just incredible, you know, like life changing. Um, I spent time on Sesame Street and and talking to Elmo and understanding characters, characters and puppeteers and all those types yeah. of things. So I've had experiences on the journey, um, and it's and it's just been incredible. Like I love that. I'm kind of jealous because I'm not trusted <laughs> behind a wheel of a car. So as soon as you said you drove a Ferrari, I was like, ah, as soon as we went to Ferrari World, uh, there's a track outside, straight outside, yep. isn't there? Yep. Right by the Yas Marina circuit. And yep. you could actually pay to do like a lap or something in a Ferrari California. Yep. And I was gutted because yep. they didn't let you drive. It was on a track, so I thought I could get away with it. Unfortunately not. But yep. uh, was the Flintstones thing that you worked on, the log flume in Warner Brothers by any chance? Or was no. that something completely separate? No, that was like way at the beginning yeah. when I first started at Australia's Wonderland. The IP there was Hanna-Barbera. Yeah. And so we had Hanna Barbera Land, which was like the equivalent, I guess, of like yeah. the babies for us now. So we had the Flintstones and we had all of our attractions themed around that. And it was just amazing. Obviously, I grew up watching the Flintstones. Yeah. So it was right, you know, at the time that was like, that was like top shelf IP yeah. um, to, to now what you see, do you know what I mean, across across all of the parks. So yeah, it was really great. So, Fantastic. Yeah. So with the experience that you've got, you must have been inundated with job offers before taking the role here. What was it about Alton Towers Resort that you thought? This is the park I want to work at. Well, I actually hadn't been to the park before. I came in November 22 as part of like, you know, just discovery. Um, I really have to find something that connects me to the place that I'm going to as well. So as soon as I put my feet on the ground, I knew, I knew. I just looked at my husband and I was like, he was like, okay, this is it. Yeah. Um, it. It's magical. It's a magical place. I was incredibly interested in the portfolio. I was incredibly interested in the opportunity. Um, it, it had everything together. It has the hotel accommodation. It has the water park. It has the theme park. Yeah. It has as the historic gardens, you know, it's all those types of things. So for me, it was the ideal of how do I find that place that culminates all of my experience that I can bring together and, and this was it. Plus, obviously, across the time when I'd been in the industry, everybody knows of Alton Towers, you know, like about the theme park as the rides were developing, as Merlin was progressing. So obviously, I had a I had a sight line in terms of an external person just watching it grow and watching the attractions go in. Um, and then once I was here, I was like, this is it. This is, this is the one. Okay. Um, yeah. When it comes to, I've always been curious because obviously um, Alton Towers falls under that Merlin umbrella, doesn't it? Yeah. So I'm always curious as to how much control Merlin have over day-to-day -day park operations or is it more just the major decisions? So I'm wondering if you could disclose a little bit more about how that works. Yeah, it's, it's a collaboration. Like yeah. I work for Merlin Entertainments, yeah. but I lead Alton Towers Resort and that's probably the simplest way to kind of like put it together so we it, it's a collaboration we make decisions together about our investments all of those things have a process um, but I'm very much at the lead of Alton Towers in terms of like how do we progress what is the three year what is the five year what is the yeah. ten year and then and then we talk it through and you know go through the motions there so I would say it's collaborative you know um, Merlin is global there's so many incredible people with inside Merlin Entertainments that I'm really fortunate to get to work with and I think again collective experience around the globe lots of operators you know our own internal network and we kind of just all come together and make decisions together. Right, fantastic. Yeah. So I think it's fair to say that 2023 was a transitional period for the park in terms of Alton Towers Resort. It was a brand new role for you in a new country. Uh, as soon as you sat down at your desk for the first couple of months, what was the one thing that you thought, right, I need to address this issue immediately? I don't know if there was anything like that I felt like immediately. My, the 23 for me was about engagement, proactively engaging, riding all of the rides, staying in the hotel, standing in the queue lines, going to all of the events. So I proactively 
made sure that I had that time and space to experience the park and watch it and see it, yeah. um, understand the infrastructure, get to know my team, you know, had listening groups with all of the colleagues, understand what's challenging them. And there were things along that season, like I, I look back at that at 23 as, you know, an incredible time for, for me personally, just to get to know the portfolio yeah. and to understand it. There were small things along the way that you saw, like the waterfalls came back on, the guest services hubs reopened, and, you know, I, we did some entertainment over summer. Like there were some tests and learns for me just to understand, like, what do people look at? What do people see? How much of an impact? I moved some theming around and I saw everybody's response to that. So it was really quite interesting because our audience is, they love it, you know, that they, they pay attention to the details. They watch it as it changes, um, which I thought was incredibly important. I rode Curse a lot during the year brand new attraction. I mean, I started five weeks before that opened. So just to see that through, what does it look like? What are the challenges? You know, how, how we're actually operating, especially from a new project. Um, so yeah, I rode a lot. I was in the park a lot, um, getting to know people and, and just understanding it so I could make decisions. So as, as I was going through that season, I was making decisions and kind of like setting, thinking to what the framework would be for 24. Um, and, you know, obviously we've made those announcements yeah. now and you can, you can see that. Um, you can see those changes and some things that we're going to be doing differently this year. It's crazy how fans respond the second you turn a water pump on, isn't it, I, in the waterfalls, and everyone's like, it's a new ride, like a completely new experience. It's yeah. complete night and day from, from yeah. what it was before. I've operated about six different rapid rides across yeah. my career, so you know that the impact of those you know, effects and what they do, and there's a lot of those across the park. So I'm really interested about things that, that are existing that aren't on, but from a back of house perspective, like why is that, what's needed, yeah. how, do my, how does the team actually you know, manage it, deliver it every single day, there's commitment to that and just understanding if that needs extra investment some things are obsolete like do you know so you kind of have to do all of that background work but when the rapids waterfalls came back on the ride scores went up more people were going on the ride i think yeah. you started going back on the ride that's the you? first yeah. time i've been on the rapids and I, I was like we're going through i was like i don't remember seeing this before because it's been that long since i've been on it yeah. and it was just just something as simple as the waterfalls suddenly everyone was coming off and they were actually wet. It was a rapids ride that now got you wet, which before was renowned for people coming off bone dry. So yeah, it was a completely just, different night and day experience. It's incredible. And I, and I love being at the forefront, you know, of those types of things. And yeah, and I know there was a lot of comments like this should just be, it should be always on. Absolutely. Yeah. It should always be on, but it, but it hasn't, it hasn't been on and you know, but now it's about future forward for me. So I think it, it's more about just understanding the impact of that and then, you know, and setting yeah. a new standard and kind of making it consistent. I think there was a lot of feedback about the curse of Ultimate Street team wasn't there yeah. in terms of like there's I kept reading like they're still here they're still here and I was like I was really kind of curious to understand why is everybody surprised that they are still here yeah. so I had to go back into the history and then understand it and then and then I came out and you know really confirmed and said they're here to stay like yeah. they add to the experience it's how we're going forward um, so I mean I, I, I listen to a lot of feedback I read a lot of feedback I have my own feedback you know my team yeah. has feedback so it's about how that culminates together and then how do you then make changes, you know, and make implementations that make sense and, you know, go forward. Yeah, I remember you saying in an interview once that Curse is like the benchmark for where you want future of Alton Towers attractions to go. And that is kind of inclusive of the street team, the themed food, the themed beverages. Yeah. Is that something we could potentially see in other areas of the park moving forward? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So um, Alton Towers has always been a park that's kind of been known for its storytelling and for its magic. Uh, I feel as though that's kind of been lost in a way over the last few seasons previous before your arrival. As divisional director, what kind of implementations do you want to see moving forward to kind of reignite the sparkle back into Alton Towers Resort? I think it's just doing things, you know, it, making changes every single year, improving, being committed to what it is that we deliver, looking at new opportunities. As I said, we've just announced the 2024 season. It's yeah. different. Track walks are, you know, are back. I'm um, so nervous I for know. that. I'm, I'm, <laughs> out of the two, I saw Wicker Man. I was like, that's the easier of the two, but I need to challenge yeah. myself. And now I regret every decision of clicking that buy now button. I really, really do. So for me, it's about just continuous improvement. You know, there's always a long list. There's always lots to do there's always something to improve and that will never stop. Um, so for me, it's about what, what makes sense, what are we aiming for in the season ahead and, and delivering that to the best that we can and facing the challenges as we go. And then, you know, the following year coming back and, you know, how do we add more VIP experiences yeah. and what does that look like? And, you know, I've, I've done all the track walks. I do that with the team. You know, I go in and I give them feedback about the delivery and all those types of things that, that are part of building that experience. 
Um, so I'm excited. It will be just a continuation and a progression, especially as we continue to invest, yeah. you know, each season and we do things. And, you know, and as I said, then it's about the, the main season and how we deliver it. Pirate Takeover is a great example. You know, that was the first uh, event that I saw in 23. Um, and I was just like, I just asking lots of questions yeah. and I was like walking around the area and just like how, and, but I saw this connection between, you know, like the pirates and the guests and it, like there was just, I just felt like there was so much opportunity inside that event to really kind of like, yes, it's a half term event and it's only two weeks, but this has potential to, to be more and, and, you know, just lift and, and something really like bespoke for families when you don't have the rest of the park and how do you celebrate that space and you know what makes sense in terms of yeah. you know what you're actually offering at that time for how many people are actually coming in what's been great about that is the feedback has been absolutely incredible that also helps the, the colleagues like because they're like wow this is like yeah. people are responding so they're delivering you know in this great way battle galleons there was a lot of stuff online wasn't there like no no guns like people couldn't you know couldn't quite get yeah. their head around I was like just wait just wait yeah, exactly. like let yeah. us go let's let us go on the on the journey and it's kind of like just working through that. I think the biggest the biggest thing for me is that Sabibi's land wasn't open before. So it's taken a whole year of planning when we had that very first conversation in 23 when I had that with the team to say, what would it take to have that land, you know, fully operational and yeah. open, you know, next year and how do we plan for that? Because we're open at Christmas time. So, you know, we, we make it harder for ourselves in terms of like, there's more challenges in terms of the work that we can do in limited time you know, so that we can deliver it again. And, and so I'm, I'm really proud of it. Like the, they've roasted the occasion and, and we've delivered a great event. Like I'm, I'm, I'm just, I couldn't be happier. I mean, I'm a 30 something year old guy <laughs> who spent more than I'd like to admit a amount of time in Mutiny Bay, completely soaking up everything that the event had to yeah. offer. And that's kind of a good sort of badge of honor for me to be stuck in that area, immersed in a family friendly event. And that's something that I kind of normally detach from, but I was completely immersed. The yeah. characters were completely unlike anything we've seen at events before. Is that kind of now that Alton Towers look at the 2024 season, events have been scaled back in terms of quantity, but there's more focus on individual quality. Uh, is that something that's going to apply to all the events going forward and out of the events of this calendar season is the one that you'd pick out that's completely night and day from what guests have seen before? Well, I think Pirate Takeover is the, is the first good one for yeah. everybody to see that they are changes. And, I, and there was a lot of guests that came that said, I've never been to a Pirate Takeover before. Yeah. And then they came and then they came multiple times as well. So I thought, okay, great. The, the, the experience is really kind of generating. We've definitely looked up at the lineup for this year. I'm excited about what we've got plans for. You know, everything has, will go on its, on its journey of like, because I was at the events, all of them last year as a guest in a work perspective. I sat in the crowds. Yeah. I went in the scare attractions. I was just going to ask you about that. <laughs> did, did you, did you brave did. the I did directions. them all. Yeah. I absolutely with did. With your them eyes all. open? I did them yeah. all before we opened <laughs> with no actors. Oh, that's okay. And then I did them all with actors, yeah. you know, like to experience it. I did them in the daytime, did them in the nighttime, you know, on different days. Yeah. Um, so I think that that's really important to me just to understand what, what is everybody seeing, what is the experience and, and and where do we need to go. There was a lot of feedback, I think, about all of the events. And again, I just think that it's really important for us to do things a little bit differently. Um, and be really consistent and I think things and you should be elevating every single year some things some things might be back of house and th some things might be really front of house that you yeah. that you will notice but I think you'll definitely see a, a, a change in, in in the events that are for the year ahead. I'm looking forward to a drink or 12 at Oktoberfest, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, for everybody who's watching right now, I'm not sure if they know, or they might know, a certain roller coaster might be opening on March the 16th. Oh, yeah, really? I don't know if anyone's spoken about yeah, that. No. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what can guests um, look forward to seeing on that particular opening day when they step forward into Forbidden Valley for the first time three, in a long time? It's about three weeks now, isn't yeah. it? So I saw somebody count down yesterday, they were like, three weeks to go. Um, I'm really excited. Nemesis is, Nemesis and Nemesis Reborn born has been an incredibly like I'm just so privileged to be have been involved in that project um, I'm excited for everybody to ride it to be in the land and you know and everything that's gonna and everything that's gonna happen around that I think just people being up and close to it um, when you're standing really close to that track when you see the trains come out yeah. and you're on the ground I think that it's gonna do its, it's do itself some you know some incredible justice and I think people will just be happy to see so yeah we're excited to open the gates it's alternate and after dark on the yeah. same night first night as well so you know rides in the dark um, straight away and you'll get to see all of that um, around that area which is really really yeah. exciting 
exciting. It's, it's very exciting. A lot of fans are excited. But yeah. I think the excitement started a long time because the marketing campaign for Nemesis has probably been one of the most impressive marketing campaigns that I've seen from the resort in a long time. Yeah. Is that something that you've influenced in terms of having more creative control over the entire scope? Or is that just saying to the marketing team, right, you have a more creative freedom than you would have had in the past? We have an absolutely incredible marketing team. Like they tell stories like no, no one else I know. I mean, to celebrate the closure all the way along, you know, like I, I watch that content like quite a lot. You know, we all get excited. We're in the office when we're seeing, yeah. you know, like it's just, it really is incredible. So, um, you know, I'm on that journey with them, but you know, honestly, they, they, they do what they do and they do it well. And I really do think we're at the forefront in terms of like the UK parks and, you know, and even parks around the world where we're, we are telling a, a, a big story um, and the hype's building and everybody's on, you know, everyone's being immersed by it, which is fantastic. Because it's not easy when you've got an attraction closed, um, you know, for the year, especially some, uh, an attraction that everybody loves. Um, but the observation deck and kind of taking yeah. everybody on the journey, I know a lot of people spend a lot of time on that observation deck. Yeah, there's one in the room with us <laughs> yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, but that's been great. Like also for us too, to be able to watch it and, you know, we get to go down into the ground and, you know, see it. I've had plenty of muddy boots and hard hats there and, and watched it progress. But um, yeah, it's again, we, we're taking everybody on the journey. Um, which is exciting, you know, three weeks to go. There's still still some story left to tell. Yeah, okay, I'm looking forward to that. But I think we're forgetting something that's even overshadowing Nemesis at the moment this season, and that's the legend that is Bluey coming to CBB's <laughs> land. Uh, I mean, 10 years of celebration for CBB's land. Yeah. What can guests expect to see from that particular celebration? My fellow Australian, yeah. I love. Bluey is just absolutely an incredible IP. We're so excited to welcome her to the family. Um, and we will continue to make announcements for the 10th anniversary as well um, so that's exciting we have you know an incredibly passionate um, audience family audience that come to Walton Towers that spend time with us so bringing Bluey into that mix is, is going to be fantastic. Brilliant thank you uh, I mean just from talking to you from start to finish there's always like a positivity that I get from you that is, is very infectious and I think it's very infectious for people who have maybe I wouldn't say fed up of certain things of how things have been run in the past but maybe things have been a little tired maybe things have became a little stale and then you came along and that positivity has kind of been injected throughout the resort I mean if that's the sign of things to come I'm very excited indeed I have to be honest I'm more excited for Bluey than them no 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 <laughs> but uh, all in all I just want to thank you very much for joining me on Coaster Conversations and thanks for being so honest in your replies you're welcome I'm so glad that you've been here I'm going to see you on opening day hopefully so okay yeah. done <laughs>